Let us give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Thank you, praise and worship. You can have your seats. You can appreciate praise and worship. Thy labor is not in vain. Thy labor is not in vain. You can appreciate Pastor Getao in the house and Pastor Kevin. Nafundi wa mitambo, Brother Kevin Joseph. Kazi yake si raisi. Amen. Kusimama hapo hizo masaa and taking video si raisi. Amen. Alafu pia wewe uji appreciate kwa kukuja. Amen. Most of the time we don't we don't atushukuru watu kwa kukuja. Tuna assume ni responsibility yao kukuja. But unajua watu wanaweza amua watakuwa irresponsible kidogo na waamue hawakuji. Amen. But they have come. Si umekuja? Amen. Let us appreciate our Father in the Lord, Apostle Peter Guy. He is not in absentia. He might come in at any moment. Amen. So let us open our Bibles in the book of Psalm 92, verse number 10. Psalm 92, verse number 10. Psalms chapter 92, verse number 10. 92, verse number 10. Bible says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with the fresh oil. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. Other versions in Asema are wild ox. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with the fresh oil. Please repeat after me. I shall be anointed with the fresh oil. I shall be anointed with the fresh oil. Isaiah chapter 10, verse number 27. Isaiah chapter number 10, verse number 27. I love this verse. In Asema, and it shall come to pass. Isaiah chapter number 10, verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Praise God. Amen. Today's title is The Power of the Anointing. The power of the anointing. The power of the anointing. The anointing question is one of the most important questions in a believer's life. The anointing question is one of the most important questions in a believer's life. Life is spiritual. There is nothing physical about life. You can argue kukona physical things in the world. It is true, they are there. But please understand, even those physical things, they came from the spiritual realm. In Hebrews 11 verse 3, in Asema, God created the world, or the worlds, out of things which do not appear. And I always ask this question. God created the world, the universe, the galaxies, the stars, 
all the planets of the solar system. The Milky Way, ETC, ETC. I always ask, raw materials that God used in creating those things, where are those raw materials? Because wakati ulko na jenga kanisa, mawe sizililetwa, amen. Simiti ililetwa, amen. Maji ilikuwa ya kuchanganya simiti na mchanga na kokoto, amen. Those were the raw materials that were used to create planet uh, to, to create this church. Amen. But as I wana uliza, dunia iliumbwa, lakini raw materials za kutengeneza dunia zilitoka wapi? So please understand there is nothing physical about life. Life is deeply spiritual. This means that spiritual power is greater than physical power. Spiritual power is higher, is greater than physical power. Bwana asifiwe. Talent is not enough to succeed in life. Talent is not enough. There are many talented failures in the world. Your gift is not enough to succeed. There are many gifted casualties in life. Your abilities are not enough. There are many able-bodied people who died before their time. Yesterday we received sad news of a great athlete who passed on yesterday, a female athlete. Amen. When you see her face, you can't believe it. Mine likuwa ni kiuliza. Watu wanakufa wakitosha na hivi. Young lady, face shining, strong, athlete, anakimbia ile serious. But yesterday she passed. Amen. Your connections are not enough. You can be connected, but still end up sleeping hungry. Your oh, connections, ustegeme connections, sana. Your physical beauty is also not enough. Our society is filled with many beautiful and handsome men who are divorced. <laughs> handsome men and beautiful women who are divorced, separated, some of them are sugar mummies. Some of them sugar daddies. Some of them baby mamas. And some of them, there is a term they use, deadbeat daddies. Ukisikia mtu anaitua deadbeat daddy. Ni mtu wali kidogo, wali chenga majukumu zake. So physical beauty is not enough. Your education is not enough. To succeed. Life is full of educated fools. Did you know that education <laughs> can interfere with your learning? Did you know that education can interfere with your learning? Being educated is not necessarily being learned. One has feel. So education is not enough. Wealth and riches are also not enough. Even rich people commit suicide and leave behind their wealth and riches. There is a story that was in the media. Rich man took a gun, shot the wife, and shot himself. Pesa waliachia nani? So riches, wealth, not enough. After salvation, the next most important thing in your life is the renewal of your mind. Renewal of your mind. And after renewing your mind, the third most important thing is for you to receive fresh oil and grace and anointing from God so that you can function and achieve. 
After salvation, the next most important thing is the renewal of your mind. The third most important thing is for you to receive anointing from God. Anointing is empowerment from God so that you can have exploits in the world. If Jesus Christ, and Jesus is God, I want to believe there are no Muslims here. Kukona wa Islamu? Kukona wa Islamu. If Jesus, and Jesus is God, if he needed to be anointed to function in his ministry, then you and I need a double, need a triple, need as many portions as possible of God's anointing. Praise God. Jesus is God. Yet Jesus had to be anointed so that he can function and succeed in ministry. Luke chapter 4, verse number 18. Luke chapter number 4, verse number 18. Luke chapter number 4, verse number 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and a recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable ear of the Lord. Jesus was in the, temp in the synagogue, and he was handed the book by prophet Isaiah. You only Isaiah chapter 61. And Jesus gave this statement in the synagogue. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. So Jesus, God, needed anointing to succeed in his ministry on planet Earth. Acts chapter number 10, verse number 38. Acts chapter number 10, verse number 38. These are just examples, illustrations of showing how Jesus was anointed for ministry. Acts chapter number 10, verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power. And when we say power, we mean spiritual power. He went about doing good, healing all who are oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Jesus needed anointing. My brother, my sister, you need the anointing for you to succeed. Amen. Some people mistake and think that anointing ni a ministry peke yake, ni a kuhubiri peke yake, ni a kuimba hapa mbele peke yake, ama ni a kuevangelize huko inje, ama ni a kuprofesai, ama ni a kutoa mapepo. Anointing is, is wholesome. It is not only for church, it is also for life. The Holy Ghost didn't come just for you to function in church. The Holy Ghost is also to help you outside there. Ukiwa kazini, ukiwa home, ukiwa kwa shugulizako. The Holy Ghost is supposed to empower you in all, all, and I mean all, all areas of your life. Education, career, relationships, marriage, business, politics, leadership, ETC. Anointing is what unbelievers call luck or good fortune. They don't understand anointing, so they think ni good luck. 
they think it is good fortune. For us, if you read your Bible carefully, there is nothing like bad misfortune or, or bad luck or good luck. In fact, the word luck does not appear in the Bible. Where we end up finding your search. In other words, in the Bible, everything was programmed in the realm of the spirit. Kila kitu iko programmed. So there is no luck. There is no chance for luck. Amen. One has fewer. Hilo kitu inafanya wanasiasa wanazurura kila mahali. Wanasiasa watafuti kura, kura kwanza. They first of all look for spiritual power. Amen. That's why politician X leo ataingia kanisani. Amen. At, anataka ombewe. Anataka patiwe nguvu ya kusucceed kwa siyasa. Amen. Kesho ataende huko kwa kichaka. Akatembele wazee wakaya. Wampatie mkuki na ile shield. Amen. Na afanya hivi. Amen. Wazee wakaya wampatie nguvu ya kusucceed wapi? Kwa siyasa. Amen. Iyo siku ingine, atapanda ndege. E, afululize mbaka Nigeria. Amen. Aingie huko kwa vichaka za Lagos ama Abuja. Ama Borno State, huko ndani huko. Amen. Aende akatembele a certain baba. Anaitwa nani? Baba. Amen. Apewe power ya kukuja. Ndiye ashinde u governor ama u MCA. Amen. Wale hawana pesa ya kwenda Nigeria ama kwenda to those countries kutafuta power. They will go to a certain part a certain party in our country. Watch out to sit and you. Amen. We don't want to offend the people. Amen. Certain parts of our nation to look for power. Amen. They are in here. Politicians understand that a wingi to kwasiasa na wongozi to watu kimandazi mandazi. Even though look at to me come to an. There must be something over you. There must be a spiritual equation over your life. One has fewer. There are several biblical illustrations of anointing in the Bible. Kuna mifano za anointing ndani ya Biblia. Kwa Biblia watu walikuwa anointed for different things, for different purposes for different functions. Number one biblical illustration of anointing is what we call the ordinary anointing. We call it what? Ordinary anointing. Now, ordinary anointing was anointing that was done on the head, on the feet. Mgeni akitembea, amekuja kwako, uliko na mkaribisha, unampea maji, anapanguza kichwa na maji amen na anaosha miguu kwa sababu in those areas kulikuwa na vumbi nyingi after that alikuwa anapewa anointing oil anapaka miguu na anapaka kichwa anointing oil ilikuwa na a nice ilikuwa na harufu nzuri amen it was honor that you bestow on your visitor you know the middle eastern cultures they value visitors they value wakona hospitality ya hali ya juu amen so that is what we call ordinary anointing number two illustration of anointing in the bible we have what we call official anointing official anointing this was a rite of inauguration into each of the three typical offices of the Jewish commonwealth. In other words, ilikuwa anointing inafanyiwa viongozi wa wayahudi. There were three offices in Israel. Number one, prophet. Number two, priest. Number three, king. Prophet, priest, and king. 
all of them had to be anointed before assuming office. Jeremiah 1.5, in a Tupatia example, we are a prophet being anointed for office. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 5. Jeremiah 1, verse number 5. This is what the Bible says. Let me start from verse number 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee. Amen. There is no ordination without anointing. So I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee as a prophet to the nations. So that is official anointing. Priests, to know an example Mzuri in Psalm 113. This is a clear picture of a priest being anointed for office, Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So this is a picture that David is painting of a priest being anointed for office. Verse number two, it is like the precious, precious ointment upon the head. Precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. Precious ointment upon the head of Aaron went down to his beard, and it went down to the skirts of Aaron. That is a clear picture of a priest being ordained into his priestly office. Praise God. Then we have a king, you go to Psalm 89. Psalm 89. Psalm 89, verse number 20. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. David, my servant, my holy oil, have I anointed him. So that is the official part of anointing. Number three is what we call ecclesiastical anointing. Ecclesiastical. Ecclesiastical in Azungumzia ministry, Yakuhubiri. This is seen in James chapter 5, verse number 14. If anyone is sick among you, let the elders come and anoint him with oil and pray for him. And after that, he will get healed. Amen. I love Kukona Mark chapter 6, verse 13. The disciples of Jesus anointed people in their ministry. So that is a form of ecclesiastical anointing. Number four type of anointing is what we call the Messiah or the anointed one. The Messiah or the anointed one. This is that anointing that was upon only one person that we call Jesus Christ. This title refers to Christ whose nature of his anointing is described to be spiritual with the power of the Holy Ghost. Christ was anointed as prophet, as priest, and as king. In Luke 4:18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do da, 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 and da. Amen. Look what my summary to answer. The spirit of the Lord is appointed upon me. He has anointed me. Preach to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, etc., ETC. Verse number five, Nini. Biblical illustration of anointing number five. It is called the spiritual anointing of the Holy Ghost on Christians by God. So in your anointing, Yahweh Kamam Christo, Ukiwa Mepakwa Mafuta, Yaroho Mutakatifu. 
Amen. And this one is seen in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1 to number 4. Acts chapter number 2, verse number 1 to number 4. Holy Ghost is not for church only. Holy Ghost is for life. Holy Ghost is not for church only. Holy Ghost is for life. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Some people say utterance. Some say utterance. Now depend. Kama ulienda primary school, ama ulienda group of schools. Amen. As the Spirit gave them utterance, or as the Spirit gave them utterance, depending on where you went to school. Primary school, mashule inaitwa nyake mincha. Uko kisi. Amen. <laughs> na kukona group of schools. <laughs> the definition of anointing. This thing that we call anointing, what is it? What is this anointing that we are talking about? So anointing ni nini? What is anointing? Anointing can also be referred. So these are synonyms of anointing. Unction is anointing. Unction. Unction, U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Unction. Unction is anointing. Oil is anointing. Oil. Mafuta ya mungu ikiwa juu yako. You are anointed. Grace is also a form of anointing. Grace being upon your life. Favor being upon your life. Amen. Favor, 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 favor. You are not supposed to work for everything in your life. If you work for everything in your life, where are una favor? Amen. Some people just need to look at you and give you things. Amen. Some people just need to look at you and give you access. You are not supposed to work for everything. If you are working for everything, where are una favor? Somebody said that it is favor that flavors your labor. It is favor that flavors your labor. Favor, flavor, <laughs> labor. You need tongue twister. Simona wana lienda group of schools. Wana asfiwe. So anointing, number one, it is the influence of the Holy Ghost upon an individual. Anointing is the influence of the Holy Ghost upon an individual. Number two, anointing is the influence of God's grace and favor upon your life. The influence of God's favor and grace upon your life. Number three, anointing is the hand of God working upon your life. Mkono wa mungu iko juyako. Anointing is the hand of God working upon your life. Number four, anointing is the finger of God working upon your life. Do you know there are times you don't need the hand? God's finger is enough. Imagine. There are times you don't need the hand. Just the finger is enough. In Luke chapter 11 verse 20, waja ni kuonyeshe mali finger iko. Some of you look skeptical about the finger thing. So Luke chapter number 11 verse number 20. Bible inasema, but if I, 
with the finger of God. If I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, that is Jesus, casting out devils with the finger. You can imagine, akitumia mkono ni nini ita happen. If I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. So anointing is the finger of God upon your life. Number five, anointing is the ability of God that breaks yokes and lifts burdens from your life. Anointing is God's ability in your life, that power that breaks yokes and lifts burdens from your life. In 2021, there are many burdens and there are many yokes. People are in bondage in our society. Watu wa mefungwa na minyororo aina zote in our society. They lack the anointing. If you find that bondages and yokes are messing up with your lives, thou lackest one thing, thou lackest God's anointing. Thou lackest the finger of God upon your life. Thou lackest God's hand upon your life. Thou lackest God's spirit upon your life. Thou lackest God's grace upon thy life. If you find you are struggling with bondages and yokes, thou lackest favor, thou lackest the oil. Thou have, you have anointed me with the fresh oil, Psalm 92. So what are the benefits of God's anointing? There is one verse that really blesses me, Psalm 103. You know, say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth thy iniquities, who healeth thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy soul with good things so that you are renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. There are benefits in God's anointing. Amen. Every spiritual thing, power, etc., has benefits in it. Kama inge kwa na benefits, leo tunge zungungi, zungumzia mambo ingine. But if we are speaking about anointing, there must be something about it. There must be benefits with it. Amen. When you opened up your business, you opened it up. Why? You wanted benefits from the business. Amen. When you do the things that you normally do, you do them because of the benefits that come with it. So what are the benefits of God's anointing? What are the benefits of God's oil upon your life? Number one, God's anointing helps us to overcome this wicked world and succeed in it. The world is wicked. There is no argument about that. So God's anointing helps us to overcome the wicked world and succeed in it. The world is wicked, I repeat, and there is no argument about that. When this anointing of the Spirit fell upon Samson, Samson angeenda ashike mbweha miatatu, mbweha miatatu. You know, some of us think Samson alikuwa na biceps na triceps. I don't think Samson alikuwa hivyo. Me, I think Samson pengine alikuwa na katu. Kama mimi tu, amen. Me, sina biceps na triceps. 
But when the spirit came upon Samson, akukua naitaji triceps, akukua naitaji biceps. Amen. Alishika mbweha miatatu. Amen. Akashika mbweha miangapi? Akashika nisha mbili mbili. Zika kuwa pea angapi za mbweha? 150 pairs za mbweha. Amen. Akazi wakisha moto. Akazi wachilia ziende. Zika chome. Zika chome shamba za Philistines. Amen. Wewe umeshika mbweha. Wacha mbweha. Wewe hata kuku. Kufukuzana nae ni shida. Amen. Kuku unaita. Hey. Naita watu wa kusaidi. Kushika kuku. Samson alishika mbweha miatatu. The spirit of God was upon him. Amen. Samson, there was a place. He woke up in the middle of the night. Akaenda kwa gate ya Philistines. Akangoa gate. Amen. It is said by Bible commentators that those gates could weigh for, they could weigh like three tons. Get moja ikona three tons. Amen. Two and a half to three tons. So Samson, imagine, anatoka kwa bed. Ajatoka kwa gym, kwa bed. Anaenda. Ananyanyua get. Anaitoa. Anaenda nayo. Nikama mekelea kitu wapi kwa mabega. Na anaipandisha juu ya mlima. The spirit of God being upon Samson. The spirit of God being upon Samson. When the spirit came upon him, he took the jawbone of a donkey. Jawbone. Aku itaji sword. Aku itaji rungu. Aku itaji any kind of weapon. Donkey's jawbone. And it is said that he killed thousands of Philistines with the donkey's jawbone. The spirit of the Lord upon Samson. The spirit. Just grace was upon him. Now Samson was a funny, a funny character. Ujama alikuwa mtumishi wa Mungu lakini alikuwa na shida zake. Amen. But when the spirit came upon Samson, Samson could do things that hadi leo hatuwezi ziona. We can't see them. We have not seen such things. Bwana asifiwe. That was God's oil. That was God's grace spirit upon him. Number 2, God's anointing helps us gain speed in life. God's anointing helps us to gain speed in life. God's anointing helps us to gain speed in life. When the spirit, when the anointing, when the Holy Ghost, when the spiritual power came upon Elijah, the Bible says that Elijah outran the chariots of King Ahab. Amen. Wewe ni nani usha yona amekimbia akashinda farasi mbio? He outran, he outran the chariots of King Ahab. Horse versus man, man winning the race. Guinness Book of Records. The Bible is a round book. Imagine Bible in Guinness Book of Records. The Bible, it's a round book. It is also a Guinness Book of Records. Somebody outran horses in the Bible. You know horse in the ilikuwa kama gari yosiku, na chariots. Amen. So we can correctly say that Elijah, kama inge kuwa leo 2021, angeshinda gari ya Formula 1. You can imagine the speed that man was using. Gari ya Formula 1. Lewis Hamilton anaendesha. Akishindana <laughs> na Elijah. Na Elijah nafika kwa finishing line. Mbele yake. Kama Bible si Guinness Book of Records, then I don't know Guinness Book of Records ni nini. Amen. So God's spirit gives you speed in life. People may scorn you that you are late, but when the spirit comes upon you, you will become the latest. People may say you are late, you are late, you are late. When spirit, when oil, when grace comes upon you, you become the latest. Amen. Amen. Never know. Sumoja utapata bibi kutoka Venezuela. Amen. Wawa meowa ukambani. Mount Kenya. 
<laughs> Nyanza lakini wao wanawaletea bibi kutoka wapi? Venezuela. Unajua Venezuela? Venezuela wanaongea Spanish. Sasa English yake akiongea, your sweetheart anaongea English iko na Spanish ndani. Anakuambia como estás? Bueno, bueno, bueno. Amen. Hiyo ni Spanish. Amechanganya na English ndani. Amen. Unawambia munaona? This is my sweetheart from Venezuela. Alafu hawa nakonyesha. This is my sweetheart from Maroroi. Amen. So God's spirit gives you speed in life. Amen. Number three, God's anointing helps us to gain access to extraordinary favor and grace with both God and with man. When the oil comes upon you, you find favor and grace with men and also with God. Luke 2.52 in Asema, and Jesus found favor, grew in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with both God and with man. Yani mungu wanakupenda, na watu pia wanafanya nini, wanakupenda. Do you know how difficult it is sa ingine kupata mtu, mungu wanapenda na watu wanapenda? Amen. Kuna watu ni mungu peke yake anapenda, lakini watu, watu, watu wa wampendi. Na kuna wengine, watu wanampenda, lakini mungu amutambui. So Jesus grew in wisdom, in favor, in stature with both God and with men. The same can also be said of Samuel. It is a place is written in the book of Samuel. See your scripture. You know Apostle Paul says that it is written somewhere. So me I'm using that. It is written somewhere that also Samuel grew in wisdom and in stature with both God and with men. Amen. So, you know, a Bible is going to witnesses of two. So, Samuel and Jesus. If that grace comes upon you, amen, people and God, they begin to like you. Number four, God's anointing covers our lives with the divine protection. God's anointing covers our lives with the divine protection. Divine protection. Accidents, misfortunes, bad lucks, those things don't appear in your life. One has few. Because the favor and the oil is upon your life. If you read your Bible well, you will not see a place where a prophet alianguka nagari. Amen. At Jeremiah was traveling from Nairobi to Roiro, and the car that he was traveling in overturned at a place wherever, wherever Akuna. There were no accidents because the favor, the oil, was upon their lives. Number five, God's anointing helps us to access open heavens. God's anointing helps us to access open heavens. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33, from verse number 1 to 15, it speaks about the blessings of obedience. And then from 16, Kuendelea, the curses of disobedience. So in Deuteronomy 28, verse 33, in Asema, the heavens above you shall be brass, and the ground beneath you shall be iron. The heavens above you shall be brass. Brass, the metal. Yeah, judgment. Brass is the metal that was used for judgment. But when God's oil is upon you, the brass is removed. The ground is no longer iron, but grace is following you. Your heavens are open. When you pray, even before you begin, tayari mungu ashaskia ujamanta kuomba. Tayari signal imefika. There are people when they pray, hey, the labor they have to deploy so that their prayers can reach there. Ningori. Amen. Ninini? 
ningori yani ningumu because their heavens are brass so when god's oil is upon you prayer inafika mara hiyo hiyo how do you tap god's anointing so how do you tap god's anointing number one, it is very simple you tap it from the holy ghost you being filled with the holy ghost is very very important remember the holy ghost is not for church the holy ghost is not for what? for ministry the holy ghost is for life you don't have two lives at in life yangu ya kanisa na ini life yangu ya kazini na ini life yangu ya shule na ini life yangu ya nyumba yangu no you only have one life so when you have the oil the grace the oil the grace the anointing it helps you function everywhere that you go so where do you tap god's anointing from the holy ghost number two where do you or how do you tap god's anointing from the vessels or from the servants of god through impartation amen from vessels from the servants of god through what we call impartation when god wants to anoint you at times he sends a particular person to do that work for you amen in hosea 12:13 nasema by a prophet was israel delivered from egypt and by a prophet was he preserved at times a person needs to impart you with the oil amen are you blessed my time is up so please let us rise on our feet let us rise on our feet and begin to pray that god will give you a fresh oil fresh grace amen thou has exalted my horn like that of an unicorn you have anointed me with the fresh oil so go to god ask god to give you fresh oil fresh grace the holy ghost to anoint you afresh in every area of your life father in the name of jesus i pray for fresh grace lord anoint me afresh with your oil anoint me afresh with your oil bible says that david my servant him i have anointed with the oil jesus anoint me anoint me anoint me afresh anoint me afresh i don't want to depend on yesterday's oil i don't want to depend on last year's oil i don't want to depend on last week's oil i don't want to depend on last month's oil i need fresh oil today i need fresh grace today i need fresh spirit today empower me in the spirit realm empower me with the spirit empower me with the grace empower me in every area every aspect of my life lord empower me empower me afresh with the power empower me afresh with fresh oil and the fresh grace empower me father father in the name of jesus we thank you lord this evening we bless you father we glorify your name let us depend upon you and always seek fresh oil each and every day father we cannot depend on yesterday's or last month's or last year's oil every single day father your masses are new each and every day and if your masses are new then oil fresh oil is also our heritage thank you king of glory blessed be your holy name in jesus name we pray may god bless you fresh anointing eh we need it sindio 
so that there is grace, so there is power, there is empowerment, there is favor, there is the finger of God, <laughs> whichever terminology you want to use, eh? Eh, mkono wa mungu inakuwa juu yako na ikiwa juu yako mambo inafanyika mengine ambaye hata wewe mwenyewe uwezi kueleza you can only say this is the finger of this is the finger of god and the good part of it is that the bible says uwezi kumuomba mungu samaki alafu akakupatia nini akakupatia nyoka uwezi kuomba mkate akakupatia jiwe ukimuomba kile kilicho kizuri atafanya nini atakupatia na tunajua ya kwamba hii fever anointing inakuja kulingana na uhusiano ile tuko naye na Mungu we need to have good relationship with him we need to connect with him when we connect with him then his presence is with us and his presence has power his presence has anointing his presence has all the things that we require in our life bwana yesu asifiwe tutaomba tumalizie na unaweza kuleta sadaka yako kama iko kwa simu unaweza kutuma kwa paybill 751 252 na account tukitisho account andika offering kama uko na tithe andika tithe ile matoleo uko naye ndio utaandika bwana asifiwe acha tuombe asante Mungu wetu asante kwa neno jioni hii ya leo asante kwa kunena nasi asante kwa kututia moyo asante kwa kutukumbusha Asante maana wewe ni Mungu na paka mafuta watu wako. Na kuwapa nguvu na uwezo na kuwalinda katika kila hali. Jina lako nalisifiwe. Siku ya leo pokea sadaka zetu tunapozitoa zikubalike mbele yako na ahadi yako ikatimike katika maisha yetu. Neema ya Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo na upendo wa Mwenyezi Mungu Baba na ushirika wa Roho Mtakatifu ukae nasi sote sasa na hata milele. Amen. Bwana kubariki hata wakati unaleta sadaka yako. Asante.